I'm Insomniac and this is the Invicta Pro Diver model 31485. Alright, before I start this review, I'd like to give a big shout out to Mike Hudson for sending this watch in. Much appreciated. If anybody watching this channel has any interesting watches you'd like to see reviewed here on Should I Time This, email me at shouldITimethis at gmail.com. I'll let you know where to send the watches. They will be reviewed, insured, and sent back. Alright, let's get into the watch. The case on the 34185 is actually excellent. Typical dive watch shape, but the details are well done. First of all, this is something that I don't usually address, but the size of the case is nice. The majority of Invicta watches I've come across are huge. This one is big, but in this case, it's large enough to have bold presence, but it still fits well on my standard 7-inch wrist. The sides and case back are polished steel, while the tops of the lugs are brushed stainless, and the finishing is actually pretty well done here. The machining and angles are all uniform and nicely done. You also have a large but proportionately correct screw down crown with crown guard and the Invicta logo embossed into it. And the crown has a very good grip. The screw down case back is an exhibition style so you can see the NH35A movement in action. And Invicta added a branded rotor which adds a little splash of detail. Around the outer edge of the case back you have information about the watch well engraved into it. Lastly we have the bezel which was surprising to me on a lot of levels. First of all, we have the aesthetics. It's a steel bezel insert, which isn't surprising for a watch in this price bracket, but it's this really cool mirrored gray with a printed minute track done in black. That detail matches not only the strap, but also the grippy outer edge of the bezel. Second is the bezel action. It's really stiff without being too hard to turn, really great positive clicks between positions, and almost zero wiggle in the mechanism, regardless of where the bezel is set. So it looks nice on this piece, and is actually very usable and stable. Overall, especially for a watch in this price range, it's a nice case. The dial on this watch isn't necessarily impressive, but it's very solid in its simplicity and overall detail. The base of the dial is just a flat, non-textured gray backdrop, but it's a perfect shade to go with the bezel, as well as the black accents on the bezel and strap. You have a steel chapter ring around the outer edge of the dial with Pro Diver and Master of the Sea printed on it. Of course, this is one of the few details I don't care for here. We all know that Invicta likes to do homage pieces, and I didn't need to point out that this is an obvious aesthetic replica of a Rolex Sea Dweller, but Invicta felt the need to drive the point home by slapping the word Sea somewhere on the watch. So it doesn't look bad. The Rolex Sea Dweller has black text on the outer silver ring as well. Uh, but we didn't need the not-so-subtle look at me in a Sea Dweller reference, in my opinion. Back to the good stuff on this dial. The hour indices are fairly thick applied markers, a mix of circles and rectangles, with a triangle for the 12. All done with nicely polished borders and filled with gray luminescent fillings. You have the Invicta name printed under the 12, and three lines of text printed above the 6, all more or less advertising the watch's water resistance capabilities. In place of the 3 o'clock index, you have a date window, black numeral on a white disc. Last but not least, we have the hands. They're a can't-believe Invicta hasn't been sued replica of Rolex Sea Dweller hands, with the exception of two small details on the second hand. The loom marker is further down the hand, and you have an Invicta logo counterbalance. The hands are nicely polished, and they're the right length for this style, so overall I think it's a good look. The only usable complication on this watch is the date located at the 3 o'clock position, it's obviously a useful complication and it works. My only complaint is that it's a bit too small for this style in my opinion. If your eyesight isn't perfect, you might have to do a little bit of squinting to read the date. The loom on this watch is pretty dismal. It glows pretty evenly, but that's the only good thing I can say about it. As you can see here on screen, it's not very bright even with a direct loom charge. And if you're just going from a bright room into a dark space, it doesn't really pick up any amount of charge that you can easily see. So on paper, it has loom filling in the indices and hands, but for most practical applications, it basically doesn't have any usable loom. Time at a glance on this watch is very good. 
The dial isn't cluttered at all, the polished hands contrast nicely against the flat gray dial, and the length of the hands is proportionately correct. The only reason I can't give it a perfect score here is because the only minute track is located on the bezel. So you can see where the minute hand is pointing, but it's obviously not as fast of a read as if there were some kind of indices on the dial itself. Overall though, very good. The strap that came with this watch is a black polyester band with a brushed stainless buckle with the Invicta name engraved into it. Aesthetically it looks great with this watch, I found it to be very comfortable throughout the day during the time that I had it here, and the free loops hold the excess strap in place pretty well. I also like the fact that the part of the strap with the sizing holes is reinforced with leather for long term added durability. My only complaint here is the thickness of the strap. Because it's fairly thin it doesn't counteract the weight of the fairly chunky watch body as well as I'd like it to, it's not terribly top heavy but a more substantial thickness would have given this strap and overall watch a perfect feel on the wrist. Last but not least, we have value. Now on the Invicta website, this watch is listed for $795, which is absolutely laughable. But anybody who has seen any of my Invicta reviews in the past, I'm pretty sure I've explained this before. I'm pretty sure they just purposely post shock value MSRPs on their website. This way you think you're getting an absolute like 95% off steal of a deal when you go to any other website and find the watch for hundreds and hundreds of dollars cheaper. That was all a long version of this watch isn't $795. As of the time of this review, I found this watch listed on one website for $120. And I have to tell you, an automatic diver with a reliable NH35A movement, pretty handsome aesthetics, and specs actually good enough to swim with, in my opinion, is a pretty damn good value for $120. If you can see past the fact that it's an Invicta, and you like the Rolex Sea Dweller, then it's actually a really good value for $120. And I'm moderately surprised to be saying that on camera about an Invicta. But honestly, for the price, not a bad watch. Anyway, another shout out to Mike for sending this in. Really appreciate it. And uh, like I said, kind of surprised with how much I like this watch for what it is. And if you've watched more than a couple of my videos, you know that I'm not a brand snob, so I'm not surprised just because it's the Invicta name. I'm surprised because I've had a lot of Invictas come through here, which honestly did not match this, in my opinion at all, in terms of quality or overall impression. So this was a nice little surprise. All right, well, hope you enjoyed the review. Again, send me an email if you have any watches you'd like to see reviewed on the channel. And I'll see you all next time.